So today we're going to be fixing uh, the problems with the new radiator before installing it. Uh, specifically the terrible design of the air breather, um, the drain, and the, the hole here for the temperature sensor. So on my previous radiator, uh, which had the exact same end tanks, the same design for all these components. Uh, I was getting leaks here at the uh, temperature sensor, I was getting leaks at the air breather and as well as the drain. And so we're going to, you know, while we have the radiator here on the desk, we're going to mitigate those design flaws so that we don't get those leaks when the radiator's in the car and it's much harder to fix. So the first thing here is the uh, temperature sensor. So one thing I've noticed on this higher quality, more expensive radiator is that the um, temperature sensor hole here at the top has a rubber, sort of a rubber bushing that's sort of just glued on the top and that's to provide a nice seal. Um, the other radiator didn't have this. Um, but still to mitigate any leaks that could possibly form here I've got some Loctite thread sealant, which I'm going to put on the threads here of the temperature sensor so that when I install it, it's completely sealed, no problems, no leaks. So that's number one. The next thing we have to combat is the leaks at the uh, drain and the uh, air breather. So I've talked about this before, well, what exactly the problem is and this, these, these crappy, you know, floating design here of the... Um, these drain valves, which is just terrible, and these, these very crappily made um, screws. So let's zoom in here. We can take a, a closer look and, um, and show exactly what's going on here. So let's focus in on the air breather. And as you can see, like, just like before, there's the O-ring so that when the screw is set, the O-ring's being pushed flush against the surface here you get a nice seal, you get no leaks, but when you unscrew this surface here on the edge of this screw which slides in this you know this breather part here doesn't have an o-ring so it actually water just you know coolant just goes, gets all the way around and it just starts leaking out and this is terrible so two things we've done or two things I've done to solve this first number one this is a press fit plastic piece on here I don't like that. I want this to be solid and secure. And so what I'm going to do is use some Loctite RTV. And we're going to Loctite RTV this in the up position. So up because when we breathe this, we want the air to go up and out. And this just makes it easier when we have this the, the plastic tube connected. So we're going to RTV this, get a nice seal, you know, nice and, and sealed. I had to do this on my old radiator with the radiator in the car because I had already filled up the coolant and everything and it was just terrible. So we're going to do it here while we can properly get a nice good seal, nice good bead. The next thing, how do we solve the problem of no o-ring here? Well, I thought about 3D printing this piece with a groove for an o-ring, but the 3D printer plastic wouldn't hold up um, with you know 80 degree coolant being wet constantly. It would deform, it would it would just start leaking after some time. So I wanted to keep this unit and I wanted to add an o-ring. So this is the the one that came with this radiator. This is the one that's, you know, this is the original design. And what I did, this is the old one, exactly the same, except for now we have an o-ring right here. And so what I actually did, I'll, I'll have some pictures to show you, but using a drill press and um, sort of a carbide bit, sort of like a lathe, um, I cut a groove in this sort of a deep groove in the seating the seating position here and that groove actually opened up the plastic to create a, a larger surface face and I could actually fit an o-ring onto there so you can see the difference here um, one with an o-ring one without an o-ring so this one will leak this one won't and so it's a, it took a bit of work about two and a half hours um, I'll show some pictures uh, of exactly how much work and how much effort it took but once this is done, you don't have to worry about this anymore if you ever have to bleed your system. So now when we put this in, that o-ring is going to sit nice and flush. As you can see here, against this, this unit. 
So, no more leaks. That's the benefit of having this O-ring. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do that and show you exactly uh, what it looks like afterwards and then uh, install the radiator in the car. So we're finished the final steps here. What we had to do was put some silicone sealant when we installed uh, these filler cap uh, press on caps here. So we just siliconed around the outside edge, pressed these on, let it set for 24 hours, and then installed our uh, uh, screws here. Uh, so the, for the drain one, I didn't use a, a modified O-ring uh, screw because it's not really necessary. Um, when you're draining it, you want it to come out anyway, so it doesn't matter if this thing leaks a little bit. But for the breather one, I use the modified uh, screw with the O-ring so that when I do breathe it, I don't get coolant loss. I also put some silicone around the uh, temperature sensor just so I have no leaks. And now we have a fully functional non-leaking radiator that we can put back into the car. So. I mean, my estimated time here for making this O-ring modification for the breather, a couple hours. Um, you need some, you know, you need a drill press and some proper tools, but um, it wasn't too bad. And I can show you some pictures here now on what it looks like.